Welcome, welcome. My name is Amanda Kulaba, and I am here today with my fresh makeup look that my seven-year-old gave me. Love it. I love it. Well, well today we're going to start off, we're going to kick off a series called Art Class for Teachers. We're going to take the art in your classroom beyond the basic school supplies. So when I say basic school supplies, I think about the stuff that you see on school supply list, the stuff that the stores all have out at the beginning of the year, that basic paint, basic crayons, the thin, very low pigment construction paper, just that kind of stuff. We're going to take it up a notch. We will talk about that kind of stuff and how you can use that too and make the best use of that. But we're going to, we're just going to try to take the art levels up a notch or two or three. So think about how much engagement would go up if your students were using like a media or a material that they were not used to using. Even if it's math or science or social studies, not just art. If you could incorporate some of these things, it really, really will make a difference for your students. They're going to remember it longer. They're going to be more engaged. You're going to see behavior problems go down. It's just going to, you know, it's just good for the whole picture. So let's talk about mixed media. We are talking about mixed media painting techniques today. So what is mixed media? Mixed media is kind of an umbrella term for a lot of things. Basically, it means when you take more than one thing and you make something out of it. So if you get a watercolor painting that is nothing but watercolors, that's watercolor, that's a watercolor painting. But if you mix like some oil pastels with it, you're, you're, that's mixed media, you have two things going on there. So that's like the basic term. It's just when you use more than one thing. But it's mixed, mixed media really as an art form is a lot deeper than that. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to try to go into that. And for each of these techniques, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. And then I want you to go try it out in your classroom and let me know how it goes down in the comments, okay? The first technique is dry brush painting. This technique allows you to create a textured effect. So dry brush, dip your brush in paint, and then wipe it off. And that makes sure there's not too much paint on your brush because you don't want to saturate your paper or your surface and you don't want to make little puddles of paint form on there because then it, then, it's, it, it's, then it becomes too wet and it's not dry brushing anymore. You're gonna lightly drag your brush over whatever you're painting so that just a few bristles will touch it and you're gonna notice that you can still see through. So if you have a layer of paint down already, you'll still be able to see it. Next, you have stippling dry brush stippling. This is kind of like stamping, but you're using a dry brush like we just did in the dry brush technique. You're just going to take your brush and you're just going to kind of lightly pat it and, you know, you apply pressure according to how, how you want it to look, but it's pretty simple. It's a lot like stamping, but you still need the dry brush to be able to, to do it. And you should be able to still see the colors from the bottom. It's super easy to layer colors and get some depth with this technique. Scraping paint. This is so much fun. Kids love this. Um, basically, all you do is find something that you can scrape with and you scrape the paint around on the paper. Now here I am making just, I'm not mixing my colors up. You don't want to let your students just scrape and scrape and scrape and scrape and scrape because they're going to end up with that ugly brown color that all the paints make. I mean, there's a time and a place when you might need that color, but this is not it. You want to be intentional when you're using that color, not accidental. So, but I, you'll see this, you know, I'm just scraping one time, but you tell your students to scrape three or four times and then stop. You can use anything to scrape. You can use an old credit card. I don't, I mean, obviously I don't want to use my old credit cards, but I have asked like a hotel to donate old plastic keys that they, like, they'll give me a few. Um, they might give you a few that they, they've given me a few before that were canceled and that they could, you know, that they could spare. Um, but also we get like these fake credit cards in the mail all the time. And so I save that, I just always save those and we use them for this. And you can take any kind of cardboard or you can even take like, an, if you have junk mail before you take it out of the envelope when it's still pretty thick, you can just use that as a scraper. But you can also use things like plastic forks, plastic knives. It doesn't have to be a, a plain edge. The edge could have like a scallop or, you know, points on it or something like that. So there's lots of things you could use. Washes with paint. You can use almost any kind of paint for a wash. Frequently, I will use liquid watercolors that I buy and they're already liquid in a bottle and you just squirt them out. You can add water to them, which will dilute the color, or you can use them straight out of the bottle. Just, for me, it really always depended on how many students I was going to have to 
go, we're going to have to share that one bottle of paint. So whether or not I added water to it, but it will dilute the color, but you can also make your own really thin water for washes. All you have to do is just put some water with some acrylic paint or tempera paint and start up and get it to the consistency and like the dilution that you want. Then you're just going to take your brush and you're going to wash it. If you think about washing a car and how you just shh all real fast when you're spraying it, that's kind of the same concept. Wash it. Don't be intentional. I would tell my students, count to 10 and be done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and be done. Otherwise, they'll keep going and keep going and keep going and their paper will tear. But also what happens is they kids want to be so controlled and they want the same shade of blue at the top of their paper that they have at the bottom of their paper and they just keep adding and keep adding when it's okay if you have different variations in the value, different values of the color. That's the point of a wash. So give up, set limits and boundaries by saying like, oh, you know, count to 10 and then you don't use your brush anymore. Rolling paint, y'all paint rollers come in all shapes and sizes. And really all you have to do is roll it, your paint, roll your roller in the paint and get some paint on it, then roll it on your paper. You can control how much paint gets on your surface. If you want to, if you want it to be like not as thick, roll it over on the scrap piece of paper and then roll it on your actual surface. surface. But for this, I'd love to let kids just, before we actually start something where we're going to have to be real intentional, I will give them a piece of scrap paper and let them roll out some cheap temper paint and just play in it for a minute. Because if you don't, you're going to likely have some kids that are going to get in trouble because they're going to be so tempted to experiment that they're not going to be able to control themselves with it. So let them get that out of their system and then you can have them be more intentional. And this is not wasteful at all. Actually, it helps the students create a better product in the long run, but you can also save those papers where they were just playing and practicing and use that later in other mixed media works and collage for collage. Print making and stamping, kids love this, is so much fun. These are two of my favorite mixed media techniques too because you're so, you can get so creative and you can get so many different patterns and textures out of this or by using this technique. And I told you before, like that is just something that I love, patterns and textures. So you can purchase stamps to use or you can purchase blocks where you can carve your own stamps or you can just use things that you find around the house. Here I'm using, here I'm using just tin foil. It makes a stamp. You can use your thumbs, that's stamping. You can do fingerprints, that's stamping. I have here in my hand, I just have a, a rock. I could stamp with this rock. I also right here in front of me, I have this like fidget toy. It has these little things sticking out of it and the balls that are, there's not very much liquid in it. So the balls, you can feel those really nicely. This would make a great stamp. Anything, the bottom of bottles will make a great stamp. So that's three things that are right in front of me on my desk that I picked up that you can use. So when I say you can use anything for stamping, you can use anything for stamping and printmaking. Finally, if you can think of any other ways to put paint on a surface for mixed media. And, and honestly, these are techniques that you would use and pair with other mixed media concepts, which we'll go into in, in other videos. But so you wouldn't just do the watercolor wash and be done with it. You might pair that with something else to get a good composition. But if you can think of any other techniques about adding paint to a surface for mixed media, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you later. Have a good one, teachers. Bye. Okay, side note, here we go. Today, when I was just, when I was getting ready to film this video, my children got out of school early because there was um, an incident that they needed to deal with. So they got to come home a little bit early. Anyway, they happened to be here when I was starting to get ready and my seven-year-old and I were just being silly and playing around and talking. I said, hey, you wanna do my makeup? And she said, yes. And so the makeup you see, complete with this beauty mark right here, this freckle, is her doing. She did my makeup. I straightened, I, I straightened up my eyelashes and my lipstick the best I could. But I um, hope you enjoy these kind of silly outtakes of us doing our makeup. It's all about letting kids be creative. Let kids be kids. Let them be creative. <laughs>